yeah. very good morning to all of you i am extremely thankful to the organizers who gave me an opportunity to share some of my thoughts the title of my talk is ai integration in nanotechnological applications now as you know that ai is facing almost all the educational system technological system everything now in first two slides i would like to mention how ai can be integrated with nanotechnology artificial intelligence is a wide ranging branch of computer science concerned with building smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence while ai is an interdisciplinary science with multiple approaches advancement in machine learning and deep learning in particular are creating a paradigm shift in virtually every sector of the technological industry artificial intelligence allows machines to model or even improve upon the capabilities of the human mind and from the development of self driving cars to the proliferation of generative ai tools like chat gpt and google's bard ai is increasingly becoming part of everyday life the development of modern science and technology depends entirely on information nano and biological sciences knowledge of engineering chemistry and physics combined by nanotechnology meanwhile artificial intelligence highly depends on the biological inspiration for developing some of its most effective paradigms for instance evolutionary algorithm or neural network if the link between current artificial intelligence and nano sciences is bridged then it is capable of boosting research in these disciplines and offering communication technology and information to the new generation which will impact our society on a large scale and possibly will provide the means for the merging of biology and technology the integration of ai and nanotechnology holds great promise for advancing scientific research healthcare and various other sectors in the science and technology now the word nano is taken from the greek word nano meaning dot it is a prefix used to describe 1 billion of something and normally represented by 10 power minus 9 particles less than 100 nanometer in diameter are said to be nanomaterials and the study of science of such materials is called nanoscience and the use of these nanomaterials in technology making such device and other thing is said to be nanotechnology as we study phenomena at this scale we we'll learn more about the nature of matter develop new theory discover new questions and answers in many areas including healthcare energy and technology figure out how to make new products and technology that are, can improve our life normally it is said that good things come in small packages this is a right proverb for nano materials and nano technology also nano science and nano technology has the revolutionary potential and will have significant economic benefits but at the same time there are ethical legal social and environmental issues to be addressed in science and technology nano materials can be categorized in different categories first based on dimension morphology state chemical composition but the most important categorization is dimensionality that is zero dimensional one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional the theme of nano science and technology are dual 
for the top-down approach of miniaturization of the components, as advanced by Richard Feynman in his often cited 1959 lecture, is stating that there is plenty of room at the bottom, and he got a Nobel Prize in 1965. He he was American physicist. The second approach was bottom-up approach, initiated by a French chemist. Jean Mary Lane, that is the self assembly of molecular components where each molecular or nanostructural component plugs itself into a suprastructure. And he also got a Nobel Prize in 1987. So basically, we can divide into two parts that is, the top down approach and the bottom up approach. Now, top down approach is mostly a physical approach. And mechanical ball milling, chemical etching, sputtering, evaporation, laser ablation, all techniques can be used. Whereas chemical methods, this is the routine method for the preparation of nanomaterial, sol gel method, chemical precipitation method, hydrothermal method, and many more. But out of these, in today's time, Green synthesis route has become very important. In green synthesis, there are a number of methods. Two methods are most important, the bacterial and the plant method, that is the stem of the plant, flower, leaf, fruit, seed, bacteria, algae, fungus, they can be used to synthesize nanomaterial. And this method is known as the green root for the synthesis of nanomaterial. Now, if we compare the chemi classical chemical method and the green chemistry, we find a lot of differences. In the classical method for synthesizing nanoparticles are costly, poisonous, and unfriendly to the environment. Whereas green chemistry route is cost-effective, one-step method, safe, and it is environmental friendly. Now, once we have synthesized the nanomaterial, then the question comes how to characterize this. This slide shows you number of methods how the nanomaterials can be characterized, how they can be identified, how their sizes can be determined. But out of different techniques, the four most important techniques are <clears throat> here. A scanning electron microscopic technique, transmission electron microscopic technique, then atomic force microscopic technique, and then X-ray diffraction technique. When we determine the size by Microscopic technique, we say particle size, but when we determine by X-ray diffraction, we say crystallite size, and the Scherer formula, Scherer formula is used to determine the crystallite size. Now, nanotechnology can be used in different sectors, optical devices, biotechnology, defense, energy storage, agriculture, water remediation, cosmetics and paste, construction, textile, sports, and many other sectors are there where nanotechnology is being used today. Now, one of the best example or one of the most important example is the conversion of macro gold to nano gold. So far, we have been knowing that gold exists in golden yellow color. So, if we look at the macro scale gold, it has a face central cube crystal, its bulk gold is golden yellow, melting point is 1064 degrees centigrade. But if you convert it into nano size, the structure changes to icosahedral. One nanometer gold is brown in color, 20 nanometer gold is red in color, and 100 nanometer is purple pink and the melting point also changes as the size increases. So this gold is one of the most important example of the
Alô. Sim, sir, you have muted yourself. Unmute can leave Silver nanoparticle can be prepared chemically by mixing sodium borohydride with silver nitrate, but this method is toxic and costly and time consuming. The best method is you prepare it with green synthesis root, that is, take extract of neem leaf mixed with silver nitrate and it is converted to silver nanoparticle immediately within a minute or two. If you increase the concentration of silver nitrate and also increase the concentration of leaf extract, different colors are obtained. Different colors indicate that different size of nanomaterials are being formed. Here, if we take the absorption spectra, UV visual or visual spectra, then different lines here shown, they show different size of the nanoparticles and we can have a rough approximation about the size with the help of absorption spectrophotometer. Now, silver nanoparticles can be used in number of sectors, animal health and feed, ointment, cream and wounds, wastewater treatment, conservation science, food protection, textile, medical, fish and fisheries, biosensory, antimicrobial and antifungal. Now you see that if you go to the hospital, now there are number of parameters which are responsible for infection in the hospital and most of the infectious material they stack on the walls of the hospital and if the wall is coated with silver nanoparticle that kills the hospital acquired infection. So hospital acquired infections are well known as nosocomial infection that occurred in the hospital and healthcare facility center. There are many factors responsible for healthcare infections such as decreased immunity of patient, multi-step treatment of patient resulted into increase in infection, spreading of drug resistant bacteria and less care is taken and they all stick on the wall of the hospital and if the wall is coated or painted by mixing silver nanoparticle, these bacteria will be killed and will be safe. Now, this silver nanoparticle has antibacterial property, but being a smaller size, it agglomerates. And because of the agglomeration, the properties are decreased. Therefore, nanocomposite with nanosilica is made, and a nanocomposite of nanosilver with nanosilica has better effectiveness on E. coli or other type of bacteria. In close proximity, how this kills the bacteria, you see that this is a cell where silver and nanosilica nanocomposite comes in contact with the cell wall. They rupture the wall, enter inside, combine with DNA and RNA, kill the bacteria and become safer for this. Now, because silver nanoparticle has a lot of antibacterial Kill, therefore, they are used in washing machines, they are air conditioner to kill the bacteria. Silver nanoparticle embedded bandages are being used and they can be replaced for a longer period of time. Hand gloves, aprons, they are being used for killing the bacteria. Another very important nanomaterial is the carbon. Carbon has Different allotropic forms in the form of a nanomaterial, nanotube, fullerene, graphene, diamond, amorphous, graphite, all are there. Now, description of nanotechnology is incomplete without touching upon carbon nanotubes and graphene, nature's finest gift to mankind, the most amazing and wonderful nanostructure that the human being has discovered so far. Now, graphene is the back of all these. If you stack it, it is converted to graphite, 
if you roll it, it is converted to nanotube. And if you wrap it, it is converted to a fullerene. Nanotubes, they are very important form of uh, carbon na nanomaterials. There are two types of, basically two types of carbon nanotube, single wall carbon nanotube and multi wall carbon nanotubes. Now, there are a number of methods to prepare these nanotubes, but a very simple method which we have adopted in our laboratory for demonstrating to the students is we dissolve ferrocene in certain organic solvent like toluene, benzene, xylene, etc. And then we allow slowly to pass this spray in the furnace where a platinum foil is kept at about 800 degrees centigrade. Now this solution passes on a platinum foil which is kept at about 800. The ferrocene is decomposed and gives you nanodimension iron. This nanodimension iron converts the organic compound like benzene, xylene, toluene, etc. to nanocarbon. And this nanocarbon, mostly it is in the form of multi wall carbon nanotube. Of course, carbon is also there, but to demonstrate to the student, it is an experiment, unexpensive device to show how carbon nanotube can be made. Although it is a costly thing, one gram uh, single wall carbon nanotube may be costing about 100 US dollars. The properties are <coughs> carbon nanotubes are amorphous, high chemical and thermal stability up to 2000 degrees centigrade, low density, and high compressive young modulus tensile strength, say. Low density means 1.33 to 1.40, 1.6 the weight of steel. Young modulus, about 1 terapascal, whereas 0 0.2 terapascal for steel. Tensile strength, 15 to 100 gigapascal, whereas for steel it is 2 gigapascal. So being lighter but having higher strength can be used for various purposes, for example, the carbon nanotubes has application in different sector, print, paper, packaging, nanocomposite, film, biotechnology, energy storage, construction, water filter, transistor, coating, microelectronic, advanced tire system, etc. Now, carbon nanotubes are being used to develop flat screen television. At the moment, you see that you have a flat screen, you can't fold it. Now, attempts are being made to make the screen foldable with the help of carbon nanotube, even the this laptop screen also. These are mixed in badminton. This make the badminton very stable, very durable, but at the same time very light, cycle, uh, tubes and frames. They are made of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are being used for purification of water particularly dyes from the water by adsorption techniques. Carbon nanotubes can be used for drug delivery, thermal therapy, photoluminescent imaging, gene delivery, stem cell photo, acoustic imaging. Now, another very important carbon electrode, which is of nanodimension, is graphene. Graphene exists in four forms, simple graphene, it has benzene structure like uh, honeycomb, then graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide, and graphene nanoplates. And this can be used in various fields, water dissemination, field emission, medical application, sensor, supercapacitor, battery, transportation, electronics, and many other sectors are there where graphenes are being used. Nanomaterials, particularly graphene and carbon nanotubes, are being used frequently in construction sector in making the buildings more stable, particularly if you mix carbon nanotube or graphene or some other carbon nanofiber, the strength of the concrete is increased, the hology is changed, cement hydration is increased, pore dimensions are decreased, heating and cooling devices are made that is phase change material, photocatalytic, and durability of concrete is increased. Here, 
if you construct a building and you expect that there is going to be the formation of a crack and if carbon nanotube is added there in one or two percent only, then it acts as a bridge as you see here, the fiber and it saves the building and it gives you a lot of time to repair the wall of the building. Further, if you just simply add 0.013% of carbon nanotube in the concrete, the compressive strength becomes much higher as compared to other. So the carbon nanotube increases the compressive strength. It increases the durability also because the pore size is decreased. Now, another very important uh, nanomaterial is zinc oxide nanomaterial. Zinc oxide nanomaterial can easily be prepared by heating zinc hydroxide at about 400 degrees centigrade where nano-sized zinc oxide is formed. But normally we today prepare nano-zinc oxide by green root. One of the simplest methods is take the puppy of fruit, take out the seeds of the fruit, wash it, dry it, grind it and uh, uh, mix with the zinc gluconate hydrate solution in presence of sodium hydroxide and heat it under microwave, then immediately you get zinc oxide nanoparticle. These are the transmission electron microscopic picture and the X-ray diffraction pattern of zinc oxide nanoparticle, which confirms that zinc oxide nanoparticle is formed. You can determine the size by using Scherer formula. Now, <clears throat> you know that before five or ten years before, cricketers used to use white paint on their faces so that there is no etching from the UV radiation and that was nothing but zinc oxide powder macrocyte. Zinc oxide blocked the UV radiation, but now you don't see the faces white because nano-sized zinc oxide is being used for coating the faces and they hinder the passage of UV radiation, but they appear to be transparent. There is a building in Rome which has been used nano dimension of 20 nanometer size, titanium dioxide in it and coated. And the building was constructed sometimes around 2000. So far, within 25 years, there was no whitewashing or anything and the building is as clean as because this nano titanium dioxide acts as a cleaning agent and most of the dirt comes because of the organic contaminants and in the presence of ultraviolet light coming from the sun, this acts as a cleaning agent and decomposes and it is washed away. The zinc ox titanium dioxide is known as white band gap semiconductor with 3.2 electron volt as the energy gap, band gap. Now when ultraviolet light comes, the electron from the valence band jumps to the conduction band and a positive hole is created here and electron goes there. This electron converts the oxygen molecule from the water to oxide radical superoxide and ion and this is converted to hydroxide. And these superoxide anions and hydroxide radicals, they react with the organic matters, decompose into carbon dioxide and water, and with the water or with air, they are washed away. Nanotechnology is being used in textile industry in a number of ways. Water repellents, anti-static properties, wrinkle resistance, sensors, optical disc, antibacterial odor control stand for various purposes and they are being used for sensor devices or for communication devices in different sectors. Number of nanomaterials are being used. Nanofertilizers. Nanofertilizers, if used in agriculture, a smaller amount of fertilizers are being used and they serve better than the macro size. Similarly, when these nanomaterials are used, they decrease the consumption of pesticides and herbicides 
so that little amount of these are now nanoparticles hold immense promise for various applications their potential toxicity must be carefully considered researchers manufacturers and regulatory agencies should work together to ensure that nanoparticles are used safely and proper risk assessment and mitigation strategies are in place Nanomaterials in composing, synthesis, characterization, and application have shed light on the fascinating and rapidly evolving field of nanotechnology. Nanomaterials are at the forefront of scientific and technological advancement, offering unparalleled opportunities for innovation. Their synthesis, characterization, and applications are not only fascinating, but hold immense potential for shaping our future. However, it is crucial to approach the field with care and one has to combine this with artificial intelligence. But as my previous speakers have said that artificial intelligence should be used with care. So thank you very much.